Okay, in this video, let's go over our general preferences tab. So go to Soundtrack Pro, open up your preferences, select general, and let's see what we got here. Under startup, we have open, last project, new multi-track project, or new audio file project. This tells Soundtrack Pro what you want it to do when you fire it up. Do you want it to open the last project you was working on? Do you want it to open a new multi-track or a new audio file project? I keep mine on new multi-track project because if I want to open the last project I was working on, I'll just restore the saved file. Now we got timeline. Now we got move playhead by clicking in the time ruler only or in the timeline and time ruler. So in other words, in the timeline or time ruler, you can click anywhere to make your playhead snap. If you put in the time ruler only, you can't click anywhere in the in the timeline. You have to tr click up here. And this is where I like it. Because sometimes I'll be working down here and I'll click and it will accidentally move my playhead and I don't want to do that. So I just have it work when I click up here. I have it set in the time ruler only. Scroll wheel. Scrolls without scrolls window content or zooms at playhead. Now if we scroll the window content you can see this is scrolling the little scroll bar here up and down with my middle mouse scroll. If I set it to zooms at playhead it's going to zoom in the timeline there when I scroll instead of scrolling down. So it's up to you how you want it. You can zoom in by using keyboard shortcuts. A lot of people just use the keyboard shortcuts to zoom and then have their scroll wheel scroll the uh, scroll bar. But a lot of people like to use their scroll bar as zooming in and out. So it's up to you. But I use it as scrolls window content. Now, playhead auto scrolling. On, center, or off. If I have it on and I hit play. Let me turn the volume down here so you can't really hear anything. If I, if I hit play, watch the playhead. When it gets to the end, I want you to watch what happens. Okay, did you see that? It snapped back over to the beginning here. Okay? So what it done was, when it got to the end, it zipped, so it scrolled this all the way back over, and it started the playhead back at the beginning. Let me show you. So if I hit play, when it gets here, it's going to scroll down and put the playhead back to the beginning. Watch. I hit spacebar and zip see it comes back to the beginning so what it does was it just when it gets to the end it just flips back to the top and keeps going that's what that's what it means when you have it on um, on playhead auto scrolling on if you if you turn it to playhead auto scrolling to centered and when you hit play you can see now the playhead is staying in the center of the track and it's not going all the way to the end and then zip looping back over and keep going. It's staying right in the center. And that's how I usually keep it most of the time. Now if you want it off, it'll get to the end of the playhead of the screen, it'll just keep right on going. Off. See? It don't flip back over. So usually I keep mine on centered so it stays right in the center. I don't like it going to the end and then flopping back over and keep going like that. It's easier for me to keep track of centered. Use ellipses in the clip names. You don't need to worry about that. Meter channel display. I keep mine on surround order. You can put yours on output order. The, the order that it's going to be output. But I like mine. I just keep mine on surround order. Because I don't really fool with a whole bunch of stuff like that. I usually just do my podcasts and little short videos for YouTube. Automation recording sensitivity. sensitivity. Now th what this does. This will set the thinning for the, for the automation data. Okay. And it's best bet just to keep it right where it's at. Horizontal swap gesture affects the right pane or left pane. You can see which pane you want your horizontal swap gesture to affect when you make the swap gesture if it wants to trigger the right or left pane. Now we have our default time stretch tool and we will talk about the time stretch tool in later tutorials. I usually leave mine on Apple Time Stretch Complex. We can go over these later. And then we have alerts and file management. We have show alerts. And these are all the alerts you want you want soundtrack to show you. Disk overload message, save audio file, real time effects, an audio file project warning, convert to mono warning. So if you don't want it to warn you about any of this stuff, just go in and deselect all this stuff. Okay? Now, referential QuickTime movies, do you want it to only search your computer or do you want it to allow extended search searches like over a network and stuff? Save audio file project, you want it to include the source audio or just reference the source audio. If you include the source audio, it's actually going to make a copy of the audio that's in your project and put it inside a folder with your saved file. And that's the best way to do it. That way, if you delete the original file, you'll still have your, your source audio backed up in your saved file. Just nice to keep everything together unless you're really, you know, constrained for space. This is your scratch location where it's going to save all of your render files and stuff. 
and your in, in temporary files you can set that wherever you want and your edited media file this is where it's going to save all of your edited media edited media kind of like a scratch disk also um our handle length is how many seconds you want on the beginning and after a clip and you need at least three seconds or of handles if you want to do some good transitions okay so those are an overview of our general preferences in our next project or project in our next tutorial Depending on time constraints, we're going to go over the project settings rec and recording settings. If we don't have time, we'll take on one at a time. But if we have more than enough time, we'll do more than one per video. Okay? But there's a few more left, and we'll get through them, and we'll start with our project preferences next. And then, like I said, we'll get into the sexy stuff and start playing with some audio. Thanks for watching.